Sylvia Perezmeyer. I have an innocent brother, Louis Castro Pérez, and he's from eight years now for the murder of for the accused. Um, it did. Uh, I have to always put in the word of murdering three of his best friends here in Austin. Uh, I have Michelle, her roommate Cinda, and Stacy Mitchell, who was about eight years old at the time. Is that for us? <laughs> Big Lou, and over the eight years or in there, um, I have met and corresponded on death row and women. And it has been a one of these people. Uh, they are very beautiful, they're very sincere. Most of them did really make a mistake to not commit murder. So it's been really a roller coaster uh, conversing with all of these people. And of course, hi! Hello. And psychologically, physically mentally and physically up. Being on death row takes a great toll. For these men have overcome some of these hardships, hardship that they made with each other. So I brought this to look at. I also brought this little book that I can pass so you guys can, can see the faces of it. This book was actually written, um, they were photographs uh, by Ted Light. He just remains all the death row and everybody signed it. And, so, that book was written, yeah, but they, they, they were moved to, um, to this, of course, the unit where supposedly they can't <laughs> But I'm also going to pass around just Lewis and our kids and the family and all the people that love me. Every person has their own story with your family and friends and loved ones. But I think there's 400 and I want to say 12, but I think that's 406. 406 men on, of course, is very special, and most importantly, a human being. We are all in this together. When someone goes, we all go to death row. It's in your face. I, we feel like we go to death row, too. Our heart, our, our mind, our whole being is also on death row. It's a, it's a life, it's an experience beyond discouragement. Just I have power to come so you'll have the names. Um, so I pass on this list to you now. Um, for the artists as well, Edward McGrone and Gary Sterling. There's a whole list of them. I think Clyde also of our work. Um, as I mentioned, we went through a typical my brother's case, but the University of Texas Houston's Innocence Project has picked up my, my brother's case. They are working diligently uh, to prove that he did not commit these murders. And of course, all of these groups and organizations that you know that you've heard of in the job. We are trying to stop the death penalty, not just for some, not just for the innocent, not just for the mentally ill, but we really truly need to stop the death penalty in Texas. My brother's case, um, we sent a private investigator to Livingston, and she did a confession out of the railroad serial killer. You guys may have heard of his name was Angel Macarino de Sandys. I also found Benitez, and I think his most famous case was Dr. Claudia Benton in Houston. And he murdered her with the statue that she had in her home. But he is the one that is responsible for the murder of these three girls that my little brother is in prison for. He said so several times, and um, it's very, very hard to go back and fix the mistakes after the mistakes are made. From DNA, the foreign fingerprints, all of all of the all of the evidence that there was another Mexican man in that house that those girls went. Um, hidden or gone, not conveyed to the jury, so they never saw that at, of this crime scene. But since that day, December 98, our lives have really changed, and uh, it is an, an incredible road um, that we call Texas Justice. Um, we really miss Lewis, not having him at home for all the holidays and the birthdays. Lewis has two grandchildren that we just met in December, so all these years that his children have been growing up and getting married, and he's not been able to be a part of that, and it's been really rough on all of us. It's very, very painful not having him home. But it's not just painful for us. We understand how horrific it is for the victims. In our case, those victims that were our friends, and both of my little brothers were friends with these girls and their families, so it made it especially hard and doubly difficult knowing that 
those girls and the families believed that my little brother had committed the crime. They believed what they saw in the papers. They trusted the system like we always had. They believed what the jury, I mean, they believed what the prosecution gave them. And uh, they just made, they made a terrible mistake, an error, terrible error. <clears throat> and you know, I, I say in here that it's really horrible for us, but I think for the victim's families, their loved one is already passed on. They have already had an opportunity to mourn and to hopefully come to some closure. But our loved ones are still being tortured in this, in this prison system. And real world and just stuff, you know, so that we just can't think that way. The conditions of death row are horrific. And of course, all of the groups are working to change that as well. Um, Let me see. I, I'm going to skip all of this about my brother's case, and you guys can, can take a, a time to read it. But I just wanted to share that um, <coughs> our, our hurt and pain and anger and anguish and everything that we've gone through with, with our brother being taken away from us and the death of these three beautiful friends of ours and the trauma of death row with the cops and the DPS and the juries and the judges and the news, media, all of this, all of this, all the different groups and, and things that, you know, that, that I now seek out for support, um, you know, it, it, it is just really, it is just an incredible, and it's just an incredible place to be. But we were born and raised in a very beautiful family. And my brother has taken that beautifulness, that love and compassion, and faith, and hope, and joy, and all the nice things in life that we are raised with, hopefully in our homes and stable homes. He has taken that with him to death row. And he has shared with them, especially the juveniles that would come in really scared, 18, 19 year old kids, like you guys really thrown into this death world. And, you know, he would be able to sit with them and talk to them and cook for them. You know, my brother's an incredible chef, always has been, and somehow they managed to make all these incredible dishes, including tamales and enchiladas and tacos and bonbons at Christmas. And um, so he takes that with him to share to share with everyone, and they all share that. They share the camaraderie, they share faith and hope with each other. But they also are all still alive, and they're still fighting for their lives. And um, they're hopeful that someday the death penalty will end. And, and they are, they're still, you know, they continue to fight. Um, being a pen pal, for me, has been one of the ways to keep in touch with my brother and his daily life and his friends and what he does. And, and as he met nice kids on death row that he respected and respected him, then he would bring them into his life, and somehow he ended up in my life. <laughs> and so, um, you know, it, it's it's been a very rewarding and enriching thing to have these pen pals in my life. It's really sad when someone is executed because you feel like your heart is ripped out each time when you lose uh, someone on death row. You will you will get close to them, whether you want to or not, just by simply writing to them. Um, you know, you've established that, that bond and that relationship. Um, as a society, I think that we have to abolish the death penalty. I think we all believe that or we wouldn't be here today. This is not pretty work. It's a wrenching work. It's hard, but we do have to do it. And I do believe that we will abolish the death penalty soon. I always want to say for myself and for my brother and for my family, Thank you to all of you that do this kind of work, this Texas Moratorium Network, and the Campaign to End the Death Penalty, and the Texas Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty, and you guys have probably heard of some of these. And then there are other countless groups of people around the world, literally the globe. A lot of Europeans support our loved ones on death row that are very special to us, and they come here two, three, four times a year and support people on death row. And, just, you know, friendship and love and, on occasion, lawyers and, and uh, all these people have, have uh, you know, are helping, you know, the, the impetus to, to stop the death penalty. 
uh, lots of lawyers and activists and family members and guys like you that I really do believe someday we are going to, uh, to stop this madness. But in writing to a pen pal, and I have a list for everyone, uh, and these are just the ones that I've written to that are okay with getting letters you know, from pen pals. There's also a website, and I'll write it, or we can write it. Um, it is www.lampofhope.org. <coughs> The Lamp of Hope project, I think, uh, started, I don't know, maybe eight or ten years ago. And they have a long list of pen pals, that, of guys that want pen pals. Uh, so you can get on there, or you can write to any of these guys. And, and once you write to someone, you will always be introduced to someone else. Someone else will, you know, inevitably find a connection with, with whatever it is that you do in your life that, I, I, I just, you know, it's just like making friends on the outside, and this is, you know, we can make friends on the inside. But when you're writing your letters, just relax and have fun and, and develop your own special relationships with them. You are now a friend to them, you're confidant, you're very special to them because you would take that time to write a letter. And it does take time to write a letter. A lot of people don't write letters anymore. It is, it's time consuming. And going to the post office has been there for two hours to mail it. And, or just taking the time to say hello. They really appreciate it. They, they love it that someone cares and that someone is fighting for them. Um, and we just, you know, it's just great. It's a great feeling to let your humanitarian side show. A lot of these kids don't have access to television or radios or newspapers. So they're totally oblivious to the outside world. Some of them do have, um, you know, radio. And they can kind of rig the wires. I probably shouldn't say that. Uh, but to get television. So the other day when I went to visit my brother, he says, uh, have you seen George Lupin's show? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And he just, he thought that was the funniest, the greatest thing. Of course, it's a Mexican show about making fun of Mexican people and your mother hitting you with chomp and. I don't know. I just don't know. But, you know, hopefully this will be like recorded around the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's actually just sound is all that they get. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they, they take yeah. the uh, coaxial cable and they have little clear talk radios. <laughs> oh, everybody knows. Everybody knows they do that. We just don't want it to be taken away from them. So you know, it's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> only, I think it's uh, reruns now. But so they're just now getting getting uh, into what's on TV and stuff. And, and uh, of course, you know they, they you know they watch you know they get to hear the football games and you know, they do their own tailgating parties and you know as I mean as as much as they can. They are truly <laughs> in a concrete box. It's really tragic. I mean I'm making wide in front of it, but they can really touch all four sides of these concrete boxes and they do not have, they cannot see each other, they cannot communicate with each other, but I think there's like a slit in the door where they can, you know, kind of communicate at times, so, I don't know, but um, anyway, they really enjoy, uh, you know, having a link to the outside world, especially photos, they love photos of anything, you'd be amazed. Uh, if you take accidentally take a picture of something and they would love it. Anything, especially you know people and, and the outside world. I take pictures for my brother. I'll go you know on a wildflower tour or like right now it's such a gorgeous day. Just go out and snapshots and Austin's growing and changing and you know bugs, dogs. You know we took pictures of dinner last night for him. So you know they, they just love they love that and they say the more you're in the trial. Tony Ford, you know, he's escaped uh, innocence as well, so, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's an incredible fighter. And then uh, on this list is the juveniles. As you know, or as many of you may know, that we did get all the kids out of, out of death row, off of death row, and they have been released into the general population of prisons around the state. So, Nayan Williams, um, that, he is a fighter, and you may have heard of him. Uh, and he's written several books from the inside, and, and he's just an incredible young man, a writer, an incredible writer, and he puts out his own newsletters and stuff, so he always loves to hear from, from the outside world, from children, anybody's perspective, students, he would love to correspond with you all and get some of that into his newsletter. Um, Gino Wilson was one of my brother's friends that came in, juvenile, scared to death, and, um, you know, was kind of, you know, nurtured him. And, 
and, and uh, he's doing good. He's, he's doing much better now. He's much happier. They're all much happier off of Death Row. They have a big weight lifted off their shoulders. Nathan said it was like going to Disneyland. I mean, they're just thrilled to be out of Death Row. Um, and then Robert Acuna is our, was one of our latest young juveniles to, to go to Death Row. So he's really in need of, of support. But um, that's, uh, that's pretty much all that I have. If you want to come and share your story, probably have the time. Maybe I guess everybody just choose one person if you want to and just write your first letter to the end. You can. I have envelopes over here, okay, so you can you just want. put it in there and I made it up for you if you like to. Okay, so if you all want to choose one and write a letter, you can today. But I have met several people who have, you know, been released from other death rows. And I think they'll be, are they going to be, is anybody going to be part of, of uh, this week's uh, activities? Like Shuju or Suja? I mean, Suja. 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 Not at this point. We may still get somebody. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there a question? question? I didn't hear a question. Oh, he said if I had any contact with other death row inmates from other states.